wanted a moment to put other things in the water and make jet engines at Casablanca. I took a job with the
Teams who use the gazelles, the Royal Navy Shark, and of course the Army Air Corps Blue Eagles, who started their display with a very similar manoeuvre to this. Breaking from box four into two pairs, moving left and right. Again, from the Royal Marines. 
confirmed in a Falklands war. They've got the war twice in Afghanistan with three teams in Northern Ireland in between. Now a commercial pilot in the corporate VIP sector. A job he describes as a rich man's taxi driver. <laughs> The number four is broken out of the formation by keeping a pedal turn. And up with a rotation to the right, one of the And now we're going to take a seat turn to line up through the middle of the formation. So get your cameras ready for that one. Because just because the aircraft is pointing in a given direction 
just need to say that's the way it's going. unique in all the world, from the left, Team Gazelle and Team Rayboy. Thank you. 
Now one of the great joys about this is the Vance company started out wanting to build light aircraft people could afford. Because the kits are not that expensive, believe it or not. You're looking about 20, 25 grand. More than you pay for a second of BMW, for instance. You have an aircraft instead of a car. So, 200 for weight press This is what you get. Not a beginner's aircraft, though, is it? It's a tail dragger, which is more difficult, mostly, than uh, the usual nose wheel formation of air aircraft. I learned to fly in the mighty 170 formation, rolling around them as the two solos cross in opposition. It really is. It's probably the most of this flight, but it's easy to think about this team, isn't it? They're not. They've all got, they've all got real jobs, if you like.
main body of the formation are disappearing behind the pier here. And as they're pulling up for a thing they call a corkscrew. It's like being in. It's like being in a fighter. It's a it's a central problem, not like I'm training. Keep a good eye out for each other for obvious reasons. But it's the most great help. Now a lot of people often ask, what generates the smoke there? Well, it's very simple. But it's a vegetable oil. Now. Very powerful 200 horse lycoming engine. The exhaust is really, really hot. As uh, anybody who's accidentally put their hand on the car exhaust will know. So if you check the oil directly into the, uh, the engine exhaust, it doesn't burn, it vaporizes. And it leaves behind that very characteristic smoke trail. And you spot them very easily in the sky. Okay, camera's ready now for this next manoeuvre, which is a manoeuvre they made up themselves. It's called the Twizzles, and it's only this formation team that does this particular manoeuvre. So running in from the left, keep an eye out for this. Now that's the hardest formation to fly because you can't look where you're going. The only one who can do that is the leader. Everybody else is looking at him. Peeling off one at a time. And this is the twist. Ultimately, this spectacular display. 
Yeah, the pit started life as an aluminium frame coated fabric. The more modern versions, of course, have carbon fibre and glass fibre wings, so they're very much stronger than the earlier versions. But do you want to know the weird thing about this aeroplane? It was designed in 1942 by a man called Curtis Pitts, and it was designed for a, a female aerobatic pilot called Betty Skelton. Now, Betty wanted an aeroplane that she could win aerobatic competitions in. Now that gives you an idea of just how big the American aviation industry is, because 1942, we're in the middle of the Second World War, and yet they were still holding air shows and aerobatic competitions, and small companies like the Pitts Company were still building aerobatic aircraft, even though you're right in the middle of the Second World War. That's how big American industry is. I like the fact that um, when Curtis Pitts built these uh, new air aircraft as they were then, they were called stinkers because he put pictures of skunks on them. Yeah, that's absolutely right because when Betty went to him, she said she wanted an aeroplane that was a little stinker. Absolutely as manoeuvrable as he could possibly make it. Beautiful stall turn there from Ian. And that's exactly what he did. So he built a biplane so he could have a large amount of lift from a big wing area, but very short span. And he's got an aileron on each of the four wings, so his roll rate is phenomenal. So as it's a, a biplane, it's got those two wings in simple terms. That gives it the extra lift. Yeah, that's exactly right. So you've got the same advantage of a, a lifting area of a much larger monoplane wing, but crammed into a very small space. So those aileron being right out of the tips, they're very, very effective, and they give it this spectacular roll rate. It's almost as wide as it is long. Wind span is 17 foot four, and the length is 15 foot six. Now, like I said, it's tiny. I know a lot of people used to build pit specials, the single seat pit specials like this one. There is a two seat version, which is a bit bigger. They used to build them in their garages. In fact, I know... The speed is 64 miles per hour, and it's got a roll rate of 180 degrees per second. So every second, you're upside down, next second, you're right way up again. It does make it very, very interesting to fly. Now, the other thing is the top wing is right in front of the cockpit, so your view out of the cockpit is actually surprisingly limited, particularly, as I said, when you're coming into land, because you can't actually see the runway, and you have to land it sideways. Not a natural thing for anybody to do, to be a thing. horsepower in a very lightweight airframe means you've got this enormous vertical performance another beautiful stall turn there stall turn very simple you pitch up to the vertical you wait until the aircraft literally has run out of airspeed just before that you put on full rudder and it literally pinwheels around its own axis out onto the V pulling back for a loop away from us The G limits on this aircraft can do up to plus 6 G and down to minus 3. Ooh, that's going to hurt. Oh yeah. Frosted G, ladies and gentlemen. All your blood, everything in your body tries to get into your feet. Negative G, it all tries to get in the air. Now that's a lot more uncomfortable. And of course, not wearing G-pants in this aircraft like the pilots of fast jets are, and certainly like the uh, flying suit that Turbo will be wearing later on, albeit the Typhoon will pull about double that thing. Do another knife edge pass, you get some lovely shots of the upper side of the wings here. So shortly after leaving school at 18, Ian got his pilot's license. And following that, he went straight on to get his aerobatics endorsement as well. He loved it so much. After competing over the years, 
and with family commitments changing, becoming a display pilot finally seemed possible. With over 500 hours of aerobatic flying and 600 hours of flying the kit aircraft, and a combination of time, financial commitment, because unfortunately it's not cheap, and some training and support from his family, he's been able to get his aerobatic display authorization license, and that was in March 2018. And there's a little wing waddle from Ian to say goodbye and to thank you all for coming to watch his display so let's all give him a round of applause ladies and gentlemen Ian Smith in his pit Thank you. 